Hello, and uh, welcome to Stop Motion Magazine's S1 silicone puppet tutorial. Uh, we will be working on the main silicone body for this specific tutorial. And um, something to be aware of, uh, this is going to be a long tutorial, so um, be prepared. <laughs> so first off, uh, this is the puppet itself. Um, it has a silicone body, plastic feet, plastic hands, plastic head. Um, and then a, uh, I guess clothing, you know, clothing for the body. Uh, this puppet is very dynamic in the fact that you can, uh, you can do run cycles with it, uh, you can do background characters, you can do main characters, um, you can do replacement mouths, replacement heads, replacement hands, you can do folding hands where you actually have wires and stuff in them, you just have to modify the design a little bit, but it is possible. Um, and in this tutorial is basically a basics tutorial. I'm, I'm teaching you the absolute basics for understanding how to do uh, a proper silicone puppet. Um, so just stick tight and uh, there will be more advanced tutorials later on, but right now let's just focus on this. Um, also, you can modify this puppet as much as you want and, and do whatever you need to to uh, make it look pretty cool. All right, um, so first off, you need to have a sculpt, and your sculpture needs to be uh, made out of some kind of clay. Uh, this is, or wax. Uh, this is Javant clay, and we have the armature on there. I'm removing the puppet by snipping off the little uh, wires at the base of the feet. Those wires are important um, because they're going to serve as, uh, as my guides when I make the mold. Now, I place this down on some cardstock. Or sorry, not cardstock, foam core, and I'm measuring it out. I'm measuring out the body, and I'm going to make a, a foam core coffin, so to speak, for this this little body. And um, use my exacto blade and a, a square T, and I'm going to cut it. Now it's important to take measurements too as you go along. Um, you want to just keep checking and keep checking. Make sure that you're doing the right thing because you can easily mess this up. And man, that's not fun to have to start all over. So this is actually where you have to do probably the hardest part of the work. And uh, you know, I'm measuring here and guiding the size of uh, how big this this uh, box is going to be. I also try not to do square molds when it comes to ultra cal. I try to either do uh, something with more than four sides on it or a round type of uh, mold shape. That allows me to uh, get away with a lot of things. You'll see here just measuring out corner to corner or point to point to make a corner. And then we're going to cut these little triangles off. There we go. And using the X-Acto blade and a proper cutting ruler. Now this is a ruler that has a very blunt side edge. It allows you to cut really easily. <coughs> we're just going to cut all four of these sides. One of the reasons I, why you're not hearing music in the background or, or sp I'm speeding this up is because, uh, for one, if you heard the same song over and over again for the next three hours of this tutorial, you would go nuts. And two, um, it allows you to at least focus on the, what's going on here. So um, you'll see I'm, I'm actually trying to determine the, the distance from point to point. Now I'm measuring out my foam core. Now what you want to do at the beginning you want to, you know, after you've figured out your edge, you want to measure out the distance of that foam core. Like how how long is it actually going to be the whole way around? And you take a really long sheet, and you just cut a really long strip all the way down. Of course, this is kind of difficult to do on a uh, <laughs> small workstation. A 
see here, this is where we're going to measure out the corners. And when we cut this foam core, we're not going to cut all the way through. We're going to do a half cut or even just a shallow cut. We're going to cut just the top layer of paper. And then we're going to fold it back against itself. And that will allow it to um, make a, a, a corner. Now you have to me you have to measure each side, and you can you can't really mess this up by being exact. I mean, you never mess anything up by being exact, but definitely like focus here. Put the I know I'm talking too much, <laughs> but definitely focus here on the, on um, getting your measurements right, getting your angles right. I mean, if you are off just slightly, you're gonna you're gonna mess up that whole foam core. The good good news, foam core is cheap, but bad news is. Um, you don't want to do this over again because it's time consuming to make these puppets in this manner. So, and now there's um, a lot of different ways to make uh, silicone puppets, uh, and this is actually one of the ways to make a, uh, a coffin, so to speak, for pouring your, your fluids in, or a container or vessel, whatever you want to call it, into um, pouring your fluids into to make them hard, you know, the hard fluids. Um, you can do the same method uh, with epoxies. Epoxy actually uh, is a product a lot of people use to make silicone molds. Um, we're going to be using UltraCal. Oh, let's see. There we go. Yeah, I, I cut only like the the fabric just once, you know, I mean, not the fabric, the paper on the top, just the paper on top, right, right on that line, and then I break it, boop, and then now I have a bendy corner, and I can wrap around the outside edge of that uh, lower bottom panel. But yeah, so you can make, you can use this method to make your, uh, your vessel, and then go on to use other materials. Um, you can even pour silicone um, and do silicone to silicone. Uh, puppets. I did that for the Aquabat Super Show when I was making puppets for them, uh, when I was producing that little short for those guys. Um, all right, so uh, here you'll see we're, I'm going to measure all the way around, and then I'm going to hot glue the edge all the way around the base, on the outside of the base. And this will allow me to, uh, to basically have a mold wall um, for pouring my molds. You can also use, uh, you know, I think the other methods I've used, uh, just straight up wet clay to do this. Um, there's lots of different methods. This is this is probably my favorite, honestly. Now you don't have to do this stage. I'm just priming the inside of it because um, I believe I was running out of time that day, and I needed to um, I needed just to get the project done as far as I could because I actually had to go somewhere. So I primed it so that way. Um, the the wed clay wouldn't eat terribly away at the um, the foam core while it sat. Um, and now I'm measuring the the halfway mark, so I know how much I'm going to pour in. I know how much clay I'm going to build up, and where the actual puppet's going to sit. Um, and the idea is to put your clay in here first, and then put your puppet in, and uh, that will that will guarantee that you have something going on. So you know where uh, where your level is for your ultra cal pour, and thus. All right now you have this sped up, of course, because this is a long process here, but uh, it's an important process, and you get a you'll get a gist of this. Now I'm putting in wet clay. Um, actually, yeah, this is wet clay, I believe, and. Um, if you haven't heard before, wed or heard me talk about it before, wed clay is called wed for a reason. It, it stands for W. It's W E D, and it stands for Walter E Disney. And it was used back in the old day. The um, the Imagineers needed a clay that would um, they could sculpt their animatronic uh, head sculpts fast, and then also be able to leave it overnight and come back to it. Because we're talking huge sculptures. If you use just regular water based clay. Um, that doesn't have any glycerine in it, which this has glycerine, I believe, in it, um, and some, maybe some other stuff. Uh, it'll just dry right out. This will stay wet a lot longer. The catch is, though, you still need to cover it, and it's still water-based, so it will dry out. Um, 
you'll see here I'm marking the halfway point on the puppet, the, the sculpt, the maquette, so to speak. And uh, that way we know where the seam line, line is going to be, where you, where you basically put your clay up to that level. And, uh, and yeah. I'm trying to be really gentle here, trying not to poke the sculpt. Um, something to point out as well, the sculpt has been sprayed with what's called Krylon Crystal Clear. Um, this is a, uh, a, a, adds a barrier. Um, really important to mostly spray your, your, like if you're using Chavant clays, definitely spray them down with something um, because you can actually have a, a nasty reaction between uh, the clay and let's say, the silicone or the foam latex if uh, you don't know that the chemicals are, are compatible. The crystal clear at least, and I did a lot on this guy because I like to keep my, my um, cartoony looking sculpts um, as clean as possible, meaning that they're as smooth as possible. Um, yeah, so you're going to actually spray that with crystal clear before you start working with it. Um, not necessarily a step I missed because a lot of people sometimes will just they'll do their puppet, stick it in there with the wet clay and then spray it with with crystal clear. I like to do it beforehand. So we're going to try to get the clay all evenly level at this point. And then we're going to start uh, putting keys on the corners. So this the keys will allow the mold to fit in a certain way. That way um, it's snug for one. It's, it sits really tight together. And two, um, you know that you have the proper um, two halves in the right direction facing each other connected properly and that they're you know keyed together um, I'm also you see here I'm building up some clay because of the angle of the hands or the arms um, I'm building up an area where I can lay the armature down and it will and it'll sit uh, snugly and not have to be um, I don't know, funkified, <laughs> I guess, basically won't, won't uh, jostle around within there. So the actual armature wire that's going to be there will um, sit snugly against that, um, that, that spot. You see here I'm cleaning up using a sculpting tool and cleaning up all the excess clay, pulling out the nasty... And I probably what I do is I'll smooth it out with my hands or I'll use some water and a finger and I'll just smooth it out that way as well. Now by all means, if you feel like you have a better way of doing all this stuff, do it. You know, um, if you see my methods and, and you just want to build off of what I've kind of showing you do it I mean there there is no one way that you have to do things um, we're human beings man you, you got to be able to adapt to your situation and sometimes that adaptation is, is really just a mental thing it's just so that you understand it yourself so if you see something in here that you go oh, well, I'll do it this way but I'll do it something just figure it out for yourself go go do your R&D go do your um, Go do your test batches and, and do small batches, small small little designs at first to try to test this stuff out and see what works for you and what doesn't. Um, you know, uh, one of the cool things about a lot of the materials that I use, uh, I can recycle a lot of this stuff. Like that wed clay, I can recycle that. Um, unfortunately, the the foam core I can't really recycle because it's foam core. But um, I have made molds out of uh, um, what's that stuff called? MDF, which is uh, medium density fiberboard. And uh, that's cool. I mean, when you use that, that's definitely when you have to spray that, that um, Krylon uh, um, primer on. So that way it creates a barrier so it doesn't go into the MDF. But here we have the keys going in. Smoothing all this out, making sure it's right. So now I'm using water and I'm smoothing out the clay and you can definitely see the color changes when you when you do this. <coughs> this stage is important, believe it or not. You, know, you have to smooth out your your uh, sections here. 
and that way it will it will lay flush and it won't stick to the other ultra cow side of the mold because you won't have anything like um, overhang or crease or anything that's in there if you had a wrinkle in the clay like you, you stuck a, a butter knife in there and pulled it out when you make your mold that section is going to fill with ultra cow and will actually uh, uh, make it really difficult for you to open the mold and you can actually damage the mold or damage the puppet Oh man, I can't tell you the first time I ever made a silicone or tried to make a silicone puppet. Um, I glued the two halves together because I didn't put a mold release in the mold. I actually sprayed the um, the first half and didn't spray the second half, and it was a nightmare. And so when I put the silicone in there and I put the two sandwiched the two pieces together and let it cure overnight, and I came back the next day, I had glued the two halves together using silicone. You know. Some people are like, that doesn't happen. No, it does. I mean, you have to put a mold release in there. Um, you have to. If you don't, you're just going to glue the pieces together. So I actually had to take a chisel and break my mold apart and actually make a whole new mold. Um, it was it was sad. You know, and actually I destroyed my Ultra Cal, or not my Ultra Cal, the, my, um, what is that called? My uh, sculpt. I did destroyed my sculpt. So... I needed to use the silicone that was in this this ultra cal mold, so I actually smashed the ultra cal mold apart and used the silicone section of it to remold and reca recast, and it worked out. You know, I had a blank, this uh, this blank alien body blank thing that I could use, and it worked out. But uh, yeah, I mean, and that's one of the cool things you learn from your mistakes. Definitely expensive though. <laughs> And that, that was my first adventure into, um, what is that stuff called, uh, dragon skin, which um, honestly, I don't like dragon skin for casting. It's stiff. You can you can add stuff to it to like deaden it, make it like softer, but it's, it's just not my thing. I mean, I would much rather use Tencel gel, um, which is uh, a great product. Um, I highly recommend Tencel gel. I mean, it, it's fleshy. It's made to make, you know, feel like... Uh, what do you call it? A uh, human flesh. It's so cool, I mean, and it bends, and it's nice and, and soft, and it's bounce. You know, it's not bouncy like uh, that uh, dragon skin. Dragon skin's really stiff and bouncy. So, um, yeah. So anyway, yeah. You see here, I'm cleaning up, doing my thing, uh, making sure it's nice and smooth. I clean the hell out of that uh, that sculpt. You have to. And here I have the one inch rods, one inch in length. And I'm putting them down, and that's going to be so when I do my armature, I can lay my armature down in there, and it will fit snugly and perfectly in there, and I won't have to worry about it being all funky. Adding a little clay on the end, make sure it's long enough. What's great is when you make these molds, like these generic body molds, you can use them over and over and over and over and over again as long as you take care, good care of them. I still have a ton of body molds that I have from back in the day. At some point, you got to go, okay, i got to get rid of this stuff. You also see I have a peg at the top of the head where the neck goes. I put a little rod there as well, and that's for the armature as well. Um, you got to make sure you do that. And, of course, taking the picture being an idiot. Uh, that's me. <laughs> All right, so here we have the, the finished first half of uh, the, the um, wet clay section. Now I'm gonna spray crystal clear down, and this adds a barrier. It keeps the moisture away from the silicone. So, you know, wet clay has water and glycerine in it. It just keeps the moisture away. So I'm gonna spray it down very lightly. Gotta shake the hell out of that stuff sometimes. There we go. And you're gonna let it dry. Now, here you also spray the dulling spray. The dulling spray is important. Um, if but if you don't have dulling spray, don't don't stress. But the dulling spray basically is like a mist that makes the um, the ultra cal here. I got like a hair or something on there. But it makes the ultra cal uh, have um, like tooth to it. Like it, it, the, the when you pour the ultra cal onto the uh, crystal crystal clear, it act, the crystal clear has tooth to it. So it actually it will hold the ultra cal and won't slip off because water, watery stuff will. Now here we have a bucket with some water in it, just a little bit at the base. It's probably maybe uh, one eighth full of water. And then the, in the other container, I have the ultra cal. Now wear gloves when you do this stuff because it can get really, really, really hot um, and burn yourself. It also will dry out your hands and it has lye in it, so it'll, it'll burn you. 
um, you tap it in gently and you're going to just make it cloudy. It's going to become like this cloudy soup. And the goal is to get it so it has um, uh, a muddy top, uh, as John Brown, the sculptor, will say. If, you, if you're really interested in, in learning how to do advanced molding and casting, check out the Nomon series with uh, John Brown. It's, it's brilliant. Um, he does he does some great ultra cal molds. So anyway, here we have um, here we have uh, basically the ultra cal going in, and uh, you want to try to avoid bubbles as best you can at this stage, um, but they're going to happen. It's going to happen regardless. Um, tap it in slowly, and uh, get to that point where you have that crusty layer. It's like looks like mud on the top. And you'll see here, this is uh, the final result where kind of a muddy top and you have, you know, there's a little pow dry powder on there, but it's not a big deal. And I'm stirring it with a PVC pipe. Uh, this is because uh, this stuff is basically cement. You're basically making a cement mold. And uh, you can use, you know, you're not going to use popsicle sticks, obviously. You can use lots of different things. I, uh, I'm using PVC pipe because I can use it over and over and over again with this material and uh, I've seen people use plastic spoons and spatulas and all sorts of stuff. It really doesn't matter. Just stir this damn thing <laughs> and uh, try not to get any bubbles. So be smooth. Um, this stuff th should not set super fast, uh, but it will set over an hour. Uh, an hour is a good amount of time, actually. Tap it to get some bubbles to come to the top. All right, whoa, hey, splash in there. You know, tap, 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 tap. And then uh, I'm blowing on it to just try to get some of the bigger bubbles off. Tap a little bit more. I'm going to switch over to the mold and we're going to pour this sucker in there. There we are. Boom. All right. Then we're going to take what's called a chip brush or a bristle brush. And uh, we're going to just basically paint on the the first layer uh, of this ultra cow. Uh, now this, this slurry is going to dry and then you're going to add more layers. Uh, something to consider here, do not pour your ultra cow over the mold. Uh, meow to you too, kitty. Um, <laughs> you do not pour the ultra cow directly on top of the um, your sculpt. That'll just add bubbles and, and imperfections. You don't want that. So you paint on a thin layer. You let this kind of set a little bit. You don't let it dry completely. You let it set. And you'll see as you're working. Um, and then you'll slowly pour this stuff in um, a, like at the edges of your, your mold area. And that will allow it to kind of build up gradually up into the puppet. And then you kind of even it out. You don't want bubbles on your... Um, on your sculpt, on your mold halves, um, that's actually a, a negative, a bad thing. Uh, so at this point, you know, just just take it easy, take it nice and slow. Um, this is this video footage is sped up 500 times, so this process is a, a really, really long process. And uh, if you don't have the patience for this, uh, I'm sorry. There's other things you could do. <laughs> um, if you do not have the patience, uh, you could also just, instead of using UltraCal, you could use one of those really highly toxic chemicals that uh, the professional studios use, um, like Ultra, or like, uh, was not Ultra Fast Cap, was there's like a, a Fast Cast Epoxy. And you have to look up these, these suckers. Um, and, you know, I'll, I'll probably post something on the, on the stopmotionmagazine.com website uh, about what kind of materials. But for the most part, you definitely want to uh, see there. I put a little bit in there. Uh, you definitely want to take your time building these things. Um, another thing to consider this versus using an epoxy. In the case of using epoxies, a lot of times you have to use a degassing chamber of some sort um, to take the air out of the uh, epoxy. So when you pour it, it doesn't have bubbles in it as well. Um, that's another thing to consider. So here we go to the next thing, uh, which will be the second layer. Of, now, you'll see here, the, the first layer is dry, and you want it thick enough that it won't crack. Um, and it's not completely cured, by the way. It's, it's only been set for maybe 30 minutes, 
and now I'm doing my second layer and the second layer I don't have to brush in I can just mix it up and then pour it right over the mold and or right into the into the coffin or vessel and you don't really have to worry about bubbles at this stage as well except in the case of if you have huge massive bubbles um, this layer usually doesn't have any problems I just pour it right in there and make sure it's even tapping some bubbles out so there's a big bubble I see it right here in the screen up in the upper left hand corner of that thing and I just covered it not a problem I would tap this th sucker out it'll probably uh, probably work its way out and if it doesn't oh well it's not not important all right so I leveled out my mold so that way it's even across now I'm working at uh, making now this the second layer has has set and now we're doing the third layer third layer you're going to use ultra cal and you're going to use uh, burlap now the burlap uh, acts as a strengthening material for the mold um, molds as they cool down and heat up and cool down and heat up uh, throughout the years and temperatures and stuff will crack also the strain of separating the mold that will cause it to crack um, so what you want to do is you want to put this burlap layer in there and it kind of acts as a reinforcement to keep your mold together if it does crack and also to strengthen your mold overall. So um, just that little bit of burlap, this one layer, and then honestly there's like two or three layers uh, I'm, I'm building up here. And what I do is I dip it in, but it, point is um, it'll strengthen your mold and make it last a long time. Um, so I do one lengthwise and then I do crossways. And this, this allows the, the burlap to, uh, to basically act like a, a crisscross, like you know how you have a, um, a weave? So we're basically weaving this in a sense together and um, strengthening. Now once this is done I'm going to let this set. Technically I don't have to. I could actually just mix up a second, a last batch and pour it right over top of this sucker and, and we could just call it a night and come back in a few hours and flip it over and, and take it apart. But uh, I'll probably, I'd probably let this one cure for in, in 20, to an, 20 minutes to an hour and then uh, here we go. There it is. And then uh, I'll just mix up a, an, another batch and pour that right in. Now you know, um, if you if you really love stop motion animation or love making puppets, uh, you gotta love doing these molds. Because if you don't love doing these molds, um, they're just a pain in the butt. <laughs> And they're they're a lot of work, and they cost a lot of money after a while. Because next thing, you, well, they're, honestly, they don't cost a lot of money to make the mold. It's very, very negligible. Under a hundred dollars, you could build a uh, have a, build a couple great molds or three or four molds, and um, and then make some um, at this size, and then make a ton of puppets. Um, so basically, we're gonna take this uh, this mold wall completely off, and then we're gonna rebuild it. So. I take the top off and then you remove some clay and then just peel away the outer edge and then we're going to carefully and gingerly, this is sped up of course, peel that, that wet clay off. We're going to stick it in a bag because we're going to save it for later. So that's me sticking it on the side right there. It's going in this plastic bag so I can save it and uh, recycle it. Now uh, I've gone and, and cleaned that off, that mold off, I probably washed it underneath some water. That's why it was bringing brought, up, brought back and then it's been dried, and then now I'm gonna take a, a, a really spongy kind of, uh, call that a rubber hammer, and uh, just basically tap gingerly and gently along the edges to get the flashing off so I don't cut myself while I'm working on this. Don't hammer it with like really heavy, like bash the crap out of it, because that's pointless. You're gonna just destroy your mold. All right, now uh, you'll see here I'm washing out with a brush and uh, um, some water. I'm brushing out the, um, the the wed clay that's stuck in between the the sculpt and the the mold. Now this next stage is actually really important, um, and obviously we haven't gotten to it yet because I'm still <laughs> cleaning that mold. But the next stage we're going to um, we're going to add recesses in on top of what's already there. So we use some wed clay, and we're going to make some shapes around the body of this, uh, and they're about a quarter of an inch, a little bit more than a quarter of an inch uh, deep. And uh, what these serve as is when you pour your um, your next layer of ultra cowl over this, or your second half, uh, this is gonna be a recess inside that mold. And that allows for 
an open air chamber. And in that chamber, when you put your two halves together, the silicone will, will the excess silicone, the extra silicone that's not going to be used for the puppet, because you're going to have excess when you make this, is going to go into these chambers and allow the mold to actually fit really tightly together. Otherwise, if it was coming out the sides, uh, the mold will never actually sit properly, like flush against itself. So. Uh, when you go to actually clean the edges of the actual casting, the puppet itself, that seam will be really thin if you do this method. If you don't do this method, it'll be really thick. And so it'll be really hard to actually seam the puppet um, where you're going to have to cut out big chunks of it. This method allows you to you basically cut a really thin layer off and your, your, um, your seam will actually be a lot thinner and be easier to work with. And I'm trying to be neat here, you know. It's really nice to be really clean, as clean as you possibly can when you're making these molds. Um, I mean, making molds is actually an art form. Uh, a lot of people don't realize that, but it is. I mean, you make bronze sculptures, you have to make a mold. Uh, you make jewelry, you have to make a mold. Uh, you make a sculpture in any kind of form, and you want to recast it, you have to make molds. Masks, you have to mold. So this is actually an art form. And there are people that actually spend whole lives just making molds that's their job um but it's not just their job it's their passion and, and they're really good at it and i commend those people i mean it's an amazing amount of work that and detail that goes into actually making really really nice molds my molds um i try to make them nice and nice and pretty and as i move on in the years they get better and better but um there's some molds that just blow your mind you look at and you go into a a, a production studio and you're looking at uh, like a stop motion studio or even a monster making studio and you look at the designs of the molds that they make because each mold is going to be different depending on the sculpture or what they're doing it's mind boggling sometimes the, the level of complexity that these guys sometimes do they'll do a vertical mold with like five different pieces just for a human sculpture um, so when I show you this type of tutorial I'm showing you a very basic and simple method of making these molds uh, because if we did a complex tutorial it might might span over you know, a five hour tutorial. And, uh, it's one of those things that, uh, you know, I'll lose you. <laughs> I totally will if I haven't lost you already. So, um, the point is just bear with me here. I mean, these, this is, this is definitely part of the, the most important part, I think, honestly, of the whole process. So I use a little water and I smooth out those, those edges, those tops, still cleaning here, make it nice and clean. There we go. And you know, if you stay clean with your molds, your lines and everything, when you do your cleanup, uh, it's easier and it's nicer. Now what I'm doing here is I'm sculpting on um, what's called a, 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 like a, a little insert for your screwdriver. Just stick a screwdriver in there and separate the mold. Now uh, this is actually important because uh, you, you don't want to make these two things too big, but you want to make them big enough that you can stick a screwdriver in there and just kind of pry. They're pry marks. Um, and you'll use this definitely. You'll definitely need this because otherwise you're going to stab your your mold, and uh, that'll chip it and damage it. These allow it to be easily ac accessible and open. You can open it, and it also works great when you're doing working with silicone because sometimes you just can't get the leverage with your fingers because you pull the thing apart. And this will give you the leverage to stick a little screwdriver in there and, and pop it. Now notice how I'm not I'm not being dirty with these things. I'm making sure that they're nice and neat and nice and clean and building them up properly. All right. Now we're on to the next stage and I'm using uh, petroleum jelly or Vaseline. As you, can, as you call it so other places. Um, and then I'm using what's called a chip brush. Or sorry, not a chip brush. It's called an acid brush and uh, uh, because it's acid resistant. So uh, this specific uh, chip brush, uh, they're like 50 cents or 25 cents a pop. Um, you can get a bag of them for like five, bu five bucks at the um, Michaels or whatever, the, you know, the um, your hardware store or even, uh, what is that place called? Uh true value, whatever. Anyway, hobby stores, you can get them in lots of places. So and the point is you want to get the Vaseline all on the actual ultra cal surface, the other, the first mold half surface surface. And then the chip brush allows you to, um, 
to get into the crevices that you normally couldn't and also allows you to smooth it out. So uh, one of the things that kind of bugs me sometimes is if, if I go and I make a mold and I'm rushing really fast, um, it'll have these huge chunks of <laughs> petroleum jelly because I was just too sloppy and, and not working smooth enough. I was, I was too rushed. And then when you pull the mold apart, it, you see these divots in the mold. It's just ugly. I like a nice smooth mold or something that looks like it has fingerprints in it, but it's just so subtle, you know? And uh, here we go. Start cleaning it up. I'm, oh, and by the way, the reason why I'm putting uh, petroleum jelly on the sides, and this may sound really crazy, but I'm putting it on the sides because um, if I want to make the, the connection between the, the, what is it called, the mold wall that I'm going to build up again, it needs to be airtight. And it needs to be watertight because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pour cement. And if it pours down the side of that, I need to be able to get it off. And by having that on in that area, um, it's basically creating a barrier. And then I can just chip off that nonsense. Oh, and so here I'm using a paintbrush uh, and just, you know, smoothing out any excess in the crevices of the, um, the mold itself. And then now we're gonna we're gonna rebuild that uh, that mold wall, and uh, r basically rebuild the vessel. Uh, if I was smart, um, I would have used maybe some MDF instead of using fire, uh, using this uh, foam core. And that's if I'm gonna be making the same mold, type of mold all over again. Um, a good there's a really great trick where you make a uh, a box that actually kind of falls apart when you pull on one side, and I'll, I'll have to show you guys that in another, another tutorial, but basically you're making a box mold. It won't have these um, octagonal uh, sides, and, you know, it'll, um, it'll actually be a, a box. And that kind of mold is really cool to work with. I don't personally don't like them as much because um, when you have a square mold, uh, something about it makes me feel really sketchy about like if I'm going to chip the side or cut myself on it. And it's not really keen on those. I like these quad molds, but um basically remeasuring out the these sides and uh trying to be as exact as i possibly can going the whole way around the puppet and we're going to skip ahead here uh basically i measured out all my sides i cut them like i did before and then i'm just going to comfy fit it all together um, another thing that you could have done and or i could have done is uh taken the piece that I had already pulled off of there and uh measured it out and cut it that way but this at least gives me a, an exact fit and then it might be a little loose. I might actually have to uh, to tweak that, that corner there, get it fit properly. What I'll do is I'll probably just hot glue that right, right on there. There we go, and I'm holding it nice and tight. Oh, that stuff's set. So now we're at this stage where um, I'm gonna let that, that thing sit for a second and then I'm going to mix up some ultra cal and make the second half. So we're at this point where uh, you, mi you have a little water in there and you mix your ultra cal batch together and you're going to start the whole process again. You're going to paint that first layer in there. Then you're going to uh, let that set and then you're going to pour the second layer in, let that cure. And then you're going to go to uh, doing the burlap layer. And then after that one's set, then you do your last one. You're the one that seals it all in. Probably just clean up some edges there. Mixing it up, and uh, you guys have seen this before, so let's just uh, let's just jump ahead a little bit here. All right, now the painting that first layer in, and uh, you know, be gentle. Don't move those uh, keys or those recesses, because uh, that would suck if you you bump something with a paintbrush. You want to make sure there's no bubbles at this layer. All right, so now we have it cured. Of course, this is a little light layer, um, and it's not fully cured, I can tell right now it's not. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna mix another layer together, and then I'm gonna paint a very thin layer on top of that layer, and then I'm gonna pour uh, the rest of it on. Uh, and the reason this is going on like this this manner as opposed to before is uh, I probably, 
I was probably rushed. Uh, I had too much stuff going on at the same time while I was making this mold. So here we go. Paint that layer in, and then you're just going to pour that excess after you have a, a nice, a nice goopy, s smooth, thick layer on there. Just pour that sucker in there and see. And because we're dealing with um, we're dealing with the mold the way it is, uh, you see, I'm pouring it all around the edges and everything. Uh, you're not going to you're not going to pour directly onto the actual area where the, the puppet is until you've gotten enough in there. That will prevent bubbles. All right, now that's cured, definitely cured. And now we're going to do the burlap level a layer. And uh, same rules, man, uh, vertical, then horizontal, vertical, and horizontal. So you can do two or three layers, but it's important. I mean, that strengthens, strengthens everything. Just mix it, tap out the bubbles, blow out the bubbles. Dip your dip your burlap in there and go at it. I get a lot of emails. Actually, you know, I'm going to start rambling here for a second, but I get a lot of emails asking me questions about molds and uh, making things. And and honestly, I, I love getting the emails. I'm just not able to reply to them all, unfortunately. Um, I wish I could. Uh, luckily, right now. While making this video, I have a little time. So, in the next three months, when this goes up, you know, uh, you guys send, send me emails. Hopefully, I can uh, reply back to them. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's things like, uh, can I do this with uh, foam latex? Absolutely, you can definitely do the same mold for foam latex. Honestly, um, can I do this this mold for uh, plastic? No, you can't do this mold for plastic. Can I use plastic to make the mold? In some cases, yes. Can I use fiberglass? Uh, it's a totally different process. Fiberglass is a, is a different beast and honestly um, not my favorite to work with. Uh, there's other options that are I think are, are far better, but hopefully I just killed some emails right there with that answer. So anyway, um, here we go. We have uh, me pouring that last layer in after the burlap layer had, had cured and set. I'm tapping that um, a table to, to make sure that the bubbles aren't even in there, blowing the hell out of that thing. <laughs> and then uh, we'll switch over to uh, where it's all set. And now, here we go, I'm taking this uh, this mold wall off. It's completely cured after sitting there for maybe an hour or two. Um, you could honestly leave the mold for like maybe 10, 12 hours if you wanted to make sure that was guaranteed. But um, I put some screwdrivers in there and I just pry it up gently. It was that easy. Here we go. Here's the two halves. Now you have the one half where the um, you're gonna have to get the puppet out, and you have the other half that has all the clay in it. I mean, not the puppet, sorry, the maquette. Um, and pretty much, I mean, it should be pretty easy to clean things out at this point. Uh, I'm gonna take all the clay out of there, and um, including the maquette, and then I'm gonna probably clean the mold with water first, because it's gonna absorb a ton of water, honestly. And then I'm going to uh, clean the mold with uh, rubbing alcohol to get any kind of chemicals off of there. And then once that happens, um, then you're going to have to let the air dry um, for maybe 20 minutes. And then you're going to stick that mold inside your oven or uh, let it sit in the heat for a long period of time so you can evaporate a good number of uh, a lot of the, um, the moisture out of the first couple layers. Here I'm using a screwdriver getting this, these little edges out these little pins and stuff and there the puppet came right or the maquette came right out very simple and clean and uh exciting man there's a there's a mold yay there's two halves of a mold and uh yeah see okay so i, I probably didn't wash it off with water first I, i've used rubbing alcohol either or um i will end up using water though to, honestly to uh to clean up the mold before i start my uh my whole silicone casting process. Um, you don't want water uh, in the mold or on the surface of the mold. You gotta let the surface of the mold dry before you start casting uh, silicone or even foam latex. In fact, with foam latex, it's best to like leave the the mold sit for a longer period of time or stick it in the oven for an, a couple hours and just uh, keep the temperature really extremely low. Like I mean, I'm talking like 100 degrees maybe at the most, and then if you can do that, or maybe 120 and then just let it uh, evaporate the moisture out of the mold. And that'll be great. I mean, it, it'll be able to do foam latex or even uh, silicone. 
the other thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to probably want to clean up the edges of your the outside of the mold. Um, and you'll see here in a second. I'm going to take a file to it. Um, and the reason I do this is because picking up molds and putting molds down, when the edges are really sharp, here we go. I'm going to use a file, and I'm going to file down that edge. And uh, that will prevent me from cutting myself or anybody from cutting themselves when they pick up these molds. Um, they make sharp edges, man. They're razor sharp sometimes. Uh, and the worst thing is to ever have like some ultracal cut off uh, or cut into your skin, and then you end up with chunks of ultracal inside your wound. I mean, that sucks. Or get have to get stitches from the hospital because you you didn't take proper care of yourself or your molds. So there you go. There's the mold. Um, I hope you enjoyed this this tutorial. Uh, for the most part, uh, it's you know it's a joy to to know that you guys are watching this. And uh, please stick around for the second half of this uh, tutorial, the S1 silicone tutorials. Um, the second half will actually be the casting process, and then there's also the head and the feet tutorials. So check it out and check out the magazine. Peace.